Hello everyone. How are you guys all doing today? So we have comments up in the channel, I believe. So if you are on Facebook or YouTube, make sure to go ahead and leave me comments and I will be answering questions for you guys today. Hopefully everybody had an amazing holiday season and everybody was super safe and everything. We're going to be opening up Munchkin Warhammer Age of Sigmar today. Last year they came out with the 40k edition and now they have the Age of Sigmar edition here which is also a deluxe copy but of course it is Munchkin and you can play both sets together which I'm super excited about. We're also going to be taking a look at the Munchkin Warhammer Age of Sigmar Kilometer here which I always comment on is like a must have for any Munchkin game. I know players that play with these dials and keep track of their levels plus their equipment on these dials. So then they always know exactly what they have. And then I know players that also just use these whenever they're in combat and stuff, which is what I do. But there's lots of players who love using these just as the kilometer that tracks their specific stats so they can always see them. And we're going to be opening up these awesome dice here today as well. Super excited. These also have cards in them. So... Let's take a look. Let's go to the table. <gasps> Ta-da! So pretty. I love all the colors in this. But is there more Daka Daka? I hope there's more Daka Daka. Like, we're going to find out. <laughs> that was one of the best cards. I ended up uh, play testing that copy, I believe, of Warhammer 40K. Uh, before it came out, you know, when it was like there was no art on the cards or anything like that. And you really get to read those cards and see all the puns and everything. And that part is so much fun. And you notice it a lot more. The art always adds to it, which, you know, because we love John and everything. And all his art is so cute and funny. But it was really fun going through all those cards and just getting, like, the background on how everything was going to be before it looked. That was a lot of fun. So this is a deluxe copy. And if you guys have not seen the deluxe copies or do not have a deluxe copy at home D the deluxe copies are my favorites because look at they have little guys that stay on the board and they keep track of your level really easy I'll show you guys let's get I'll put this over to the side but they have a board here that keeps track of all of your levels and I think that's huge in a game when there's a ton of people there and you're not quite sure where everybody's at Ooh. Hold on here. They changed the board, guys. So a lot of the boards have been going from this way down where you start with, well, you actually start down here, one, two, three, four, and you go up like this, and then you get, like, your level 10 here, and then they have, like, their cards here and here. But I like the setup of this. This is nice. Like, I kind of like how they have their treasures and door cards together here because I feel like people won't mistakenly, like, draw from the wrong pile as much maybe. This is nice. I like that. Ooh. These are cute, guys. Gosh, I don't even remember what I was talking about before. I got distracted by the art on the board. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. Why I liked this so much as the deluxe copy. Okay. So for the deluxe copy, guys, you get to keep track of your levels, and then you can also keep track of your sex on these things here. So you end up, what you end up doing is let me get the cards out of here you put one color in front of you and then you put one color on the board with a little standy here and you keep whatever sex that you are identifying as on the board here uh, with the standy on the level that you are so we'll do red because you know i'm always the red player <laughs> and then you keep the other one out here right in front of you to go ahead and remind you which color you are and so everybody can clearly see at the table who everybody is and then if anything ever happens, like a sex change, you can always go ahead and swap them out, which is really nice. See, there's little standees there. I'll show you the little art on these guys. There's the female character. And here's the male character. And on here, you have Sigmar Slaves. He has a Sigmar Slaves hammer that, like, writing on there is going to be super, super tiny <laughs> to see. But it is cute like those and they are double sided so you have them on both sides here but yeah this is huge huge guys keeping track of levels on this so easy to see once people start getting up to those high levels here and this one actually doesn't even have like a 10 on it so like you got nine and then once you're past nine like that's it you've won that you've got it <laughs> 
but you're able to clearly see, all right, this is the last level. Here it is. Oh, no, wait, here's 10 here, right here. It's 10 is in the middle. Okay, hold on. So you're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all around in a little circle here. That's cute. Yeah, this is a neat board. I'm enjoying this. All right. Next up, we have some cards. Oh, no, wait, we got to look at the dice first, right? This one here is yellow and a really pretty blue color. It's not going to, sadly, not going to come up super great on the green screen here. But you do get that little munchkin face on there. And I want to actually uh, have the other box out here because I want to take a look at the different dice. I want to see what the difference is, guys. Oh, I have the other dice set in here. There are those guys. Hmm. I'm not sure where my other one went to. I'll have to compare later. Maybe I'll go ahead and put those on Instagram or something for you guys to see. All right, let's take a look at these cards. These ones here are going to be the treasure cards, and then we have the door cards, which are going to have these backs. And that is also, like, really nice. It's nice and bright on there. All right. And I'll open both these up and show you guys kind of how many treasures versus how many door cards there are in these decks. Because usually there's more, I believe, like, door cards than treasures for the most part. All right, we got treasures over here. Let me put my dice over here. Door cards there. And they snuck like a few sneaky door cards in here. Okay. Here's the two different decks, guys. All right, treasures in the blue, and then doors here in the yellow. As far as, like, how many cards we got here. Quite a few more doors and treasures on there. And then we can take a look at some of the art here. And then we'll, I'll open up the special cards. I especially want to take a good look at the cards and these items here. Because, like, you don't always know what cards you're getting in here. And those are always fantastic, right? <laughs> All right. Let's take a look. We'll do doors first. Ah. Just flipping everything all around today. I'm ill-practiced, guys. <laughs> We have the alliances, which are going to act as, let's see here, you have your races and your classes. So this is going to be for your armies on these, which are not your races. So that would be like your class style, your army on these. An alliance is going to give you the duel where you get all of the benefits and none of the bad stuff if you have just one army. But if you end up having two, then you have all of the benefits of both and then all of the bad stuff that comes with both, which is really nice because it makes it a versatile card. We have Chaos Storm. If this is drawn face up, it takes effect immediately. Otherwise, you may play it at any time, except during combat, not just anyone's. Uh, shuffle the door discards and deal one of the doors to each player. Do the same to the treasure discards and then put any remaining cards at the bottom of their respective decks. That's a really cool one. No kidding. That's very chaotic. <laughs> oh, look at the cheat card. It's freaking adorable. And cheats are going to go ahead and allow you to play an item that you normally would not be able to play. If it has a sex-specific or army-specific or race-specific sort of thing attached to it, you can use a cheat with that card, and you can just play it, which is always nice. We have some lose-a-level cards here. Curse of the spider god we have curse eight madcap toadstool if you aren't wearing any headgear lose a level on that one curse battle shock curse calamity hands we have curse doom blast dirge horn discard your army card if you have one if you have more than one army card in play lose one of them your choice if you have no army card you lose a level you have curse everwinter lose all flame items that's terrible <laughs> We have Curse Fading Vigor. This is a fantastic card. I love the art on this one, guys. <laughs> the Fading Vigor <laughs> is fantastic. You're just getting old, okay? <laughs> it happens to everybody. It's fine. <laughs> curse Fell in a Filth Pit. 
No one will help you in combat or accept your help. You kill a monster until you kill a monster unaided. You may use a wishing ring or lose two levels to shed this curse at any time. That's nice that they added the at the portion where you can lose two levels to discard the curse just in case, you know, because sometimes those curses are really hard to get rid of. We have Curse Gloom Spite. If you do not find a monster when you kick down the door, you must look for trouble instead of looting the room. Unless you have no monsters in your hand, leave this in front of you as a reminder. So this one makes it so you have to play something in your hand, which could be really bad because a lot of players save those level one, level two, you know, or level five cards for that last level. So hopefully they can go looking for trouble. This is like pro tips right here. Pro munchkin tips, guys, okay? <laughs> At the end, <laughs> if you're at level 9 trying to get to 10, if you've held on to a level 1 monster in your hand, you, you're you not necessarily guaranteed to win because players can do all sorts of stuff. But it's a really, really good strategy if you're looking to win a game, okay? We have Curse Loon Storm. You may play this card at the moment someone thinks they have won to prevent them from gaining the winning level. See, like cards like that. <laughs> <laughs> you could have a for sure setup of a level one or two monster in your hand, and then boom, somebody drops the loon storm on you, you know? Definitely worth losing two levels for some curses. I completely agree, especially when they make it so you can't, like, aid people in combat, or you can't have a combat until you do something specific, or you can't use items in a combat. That's a specifically nasty, nasty curse that ends up happening, and you're like, great, like... I'm a level 5. How am I going to start fighting level 20 monsters like this? This is horrible. <laughs> we have Cursed Necroquake. You are a you are negative 5 in your next combat against an undead monster. Keep this in front of you as a reminder. We have a, let's see here, Cursed Nurgle Rot. Aww. He's like, if you aren't wearing any foot gear, lose a level. He's His foot fell off, guys. <laughs> he has no foot. That's not a good way to <laughs> to try a shoe on. That's not a good way to get a shoe. That's funny. All right, we have Curse Soul Blight. Next, the next monster you fight is automatically considered undead on that one. Let's see here. Oh, we have a Curse Transmuted to Lead. Place this card with your item that is worth the most gold pieces. It is now worth zero gold pieces. A Wishing Ring played immediately will cancel this curse. Otherwise, you're stuck with it until you can trade, sell, or discard that item. That's terrible, too. Wow, okay. Let's get to some monsters and stuff. We have a retreat that's going to force you to run away from combat here. We have some wandering monster cards here. We have the command model, plus 10 to monster. Play during any combat. The monster is defeated. Draw two extra treasures. I like that. It looks like... an. That's one thing about the Warhammer sets is they really do some really cute puns and art with the fact that it is a miniatures game and that you have 3D models and that you're going to be playing with those on a field and stuff. And so a card like this is freaking adorable because, I mean, they they got a command model and, like, it's all painted up and all fantastic and, like, they probably won an award for it. It's super great. <laughs> I don't get to play miniature games very often, but I am a fan, guys. So we have plus five chaotic monsters. We have a shyish monster, negative five monster on this guy. An understrength monster. Those are always nice to defeat in combat, but you do get a reduced treasure, a minimum of one on that, which is always sad. Okay, so here are some armies here. And I'm... Um, Apologize in advance. I'm probably going to mess up all the cr crazy names of these because I am not bad, not good at pronouncing all these guys. <laughs> so we have the Moon Clan, and I'm looking for some cute cards here. I like this Moon Clan one. So safety in numbers. A Moon Clan Grot has a combat bonus equal to twice the goal. I'm sorry, twice the total number of Moon Clan Grots in the game. That's cool. So this one builds off of everybody. That's a good one. And let's see how many of those are in the deck. One, two, three. So it looks like three of those ones there. We have a Night Haunt army. So an Undead army, you may discard three cards to take the top of the Undead monster from the discards into your hand for the Night Haunt on that one. 
Oh, the Skaven. So hide in plain sight, a plus one to run away. You also have entropy on this. Curses you play from your hand may affect two players, which is fantastic. Oh my gosh. I love playing with those cards where you can curse the heck out of everybody. It's good to have some way to stop that winning level though. Yeah. Like those are the two things you have to plan for when you're playing Munchkin is how am I going to get from level nine to level 10? Cause you don't want to be the first one to get to level nine. Cause basically everybody throws everything at you once you get there. But if you can kind of slow down where, how you're fast, you're moving up, keep a very low level card in your hand and then also have a couple of things to kind of like make it so other people can't win right away. You have a pretty good chance of getting that winning level before everybody else on that. We have a Stormcast Eternal Army here. Lightning Attack, your hand items get an extra plus one combat bonus on that one there. And we also have Death Transformation. Your corpse is not looted if you die. Simply discard all of your cards except your army, which is good. Because whenever you die in Munchkin, you collect up all of your cards. You get to keep your race cards. And everybody kind of gets to, like, pick over your body. And... When that happens, like, they can get some really good cards, you know? If you have, like, a really good two-hander or one-hander or something like that, the person who I believe is, and I would have to look this up in the rules just to make sure. I want to say the lowest player gets to go first, and then they get to pick. I can't remember if it's the lowest or highest, but, and then you go in order after that. And each person gets to pick one thing, and then all of those get discarded, and you get to keep, like, your race and class cards and stuff, so... It's not too bad with that, but, like, still, you don't want to give up your stuff to everybody. With this, you're like, nobody gets my stuff. <laughs> All right, we also have Army-wise. We have the Henodite of Slanesh. Uh, inhumanity, one shot you play. One shots you play help monsters have an extra plus two in combat, and also you have a dark gift, which you may roll to run away from a curse. If you succeed, you get to put it in your hand. That's a super powerful one, too. You could actually play with this army, and then if you get the alliance where you play for both of them, and then have the other one that when your curses come up and then they affect all the players, that would be, like, insane. That would be such a rough game, guys. <laughs> and we have the Edeneth. Hopefully that's the right way I say you say that one. So this one is Spirit Theft. Whenever an opponent discards an army card, you may take it into your hand. And then you have Escape from Chaos. Discard two cards to run away automatically from a chaos monster on that one. Curse read the cursed book. You never read a cursed book, just like you never pick up a duck in a dungeon, guys. I mean, honestly, like you just don't do that. <laughs> All right. I really want to look at some of these higher level bad guys here we do have brain barnacles which is adorable some dead walkers we have a spite shroom a slag squid let's see here these guys here these squig squig launches right here are adorable with negative two to run away plus four against stormcast eternals you are dead and everyone else gets to laugh at you if you get beaten by the level four monster <laughs> that would be a bad day <laughs> We have a Branch Wraith, a Daughter of Cain. Let's get up to some of these higher level monsters. Queen Neferata, plus four against the player who has a visible bandage. <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> if you're hurt, you don't deserve to be hurt in a game too, okay? Uh, we have... Oh, we it goes from 18 and then back down. So these were the ones I pulled from the other deck here. Let's go over here. The Archon of Ever Chosen, of the Ever Chosen, will not pursue anyone of level 5 or below. Roll a die again. On a 3 or lower, you are dead. On a 4 or higher, you merely lose 3 levels. And this is a 2 level card. Those higher level monsters do give you 2 levels on those. That's the 18 and the 20 on those. And then we have the Lord Celestiant Vandis, Vandis Hammerhand. And. With these ones here, you get a lot of the play again with those miniatures and the main people that are playing in that Warhammer world and stuff like that, which is super adorable as well. Well, I guess maybe not adorable. Some some people don't like it whenever <laughs> I talk about how adorable all the miniatures are. They are super awesome looking. There we go. <laughs> all right. So... We have a fire belly. I want to look at some of the weapons and stuff. This little skink here, he's cute. 
an Icefall Yeti, uh, the Chimera, a Chimera, sorry, the Chimera. I like their faces. They look like, it looks like you walked in on them, like, in a really bad way, like they were doing something they shouldn't have, or like they're just disgruntled <laughs> that. All right. Let's look at some of these awesome things. Ooh, we have some steeds. Okay, so we have a Tuscor Chariot and then the Tara Lion there for our steeds. And steeds, well, this one, okay, so big steeds, you can only have one big item first off. So if you have a big steed, like, that's all you can have. You can only have one steed, you can have one big item, and that's it. If, unless you have a cheat card, of course. Then you can have as many as you want per cheat cards you have and stuff. And then, of course, there's always other ways to break the rules, guys. We have a Nurgle nail here, which has been sharpened into a little dagger here. Well, I guess, I mean, they're already kind of sharpened. But it's been made into a dagger. <laughs> we have a Star Drake. And we have some go up a levels. I love reading the go up a levels, okay? Blessed Blessed by the Silver Saint, we have Find an Artifact of Power. You may discard this instead to draw three face-down treasures. That's a nice go-up-a-level card, too. Because you get to choose. If you're already... Sometimes whenever you have those go-up-a-level cards, whenever you're nine or you're eight and stuff, and you're like, great, like, I'd rather just take the treasures. <laughs> Finish painting your army. That's the one I was looking for. I was hoping that they would have another painting your army one in here. Those are just so funny. They just, they remind you. You know, it's a cute little miniature game. Or it's an awesome little miniature game. Sorry, I'm going to say cute forever. <laughs> First blood, we have the Doom Gong. We have a Hammer Blade. We have the Gal Maraz. The Slayer of Kings, which is just a freaking awesome sword. If my sword had, like flaming skulls coming off of it that would be so awesome and i wouldn't even care if it did a lot of damage just the intimidation factor of having a sword like that would be awesome <laughs> warp tongue blade nice bit of thinking thinking like thinking oh he's green sorry it'll be hard to see him he has a little mom tattoo on him too <laughs> Forward to victory. We have victory or not to victory. I wish it was that easy in life. That would be super nice if you just had some signposts to follow, right? Gift of the Spider God. We have score a major victory. We have steal a level. So, vile transference. Take a level from the highest level character. Your choice if there's a tie. You cannot use this card if you are in first place or tied for first. That's a messed up card. But also, again, another way to get players from coming down from getting close to that nine. We have some arcane bolts. We have the fire guys chili. Play during combat, plus two to either side. This fire flame, it's a fire and flame attack. Let's get, we have fever cactus stew. We have a war scroll. Playing during combat, plus four to the munchkin side, usable only once. Ooh, the, ca the loaded dice here. I love having little pips on there like that. It looks fantastic. We have another one here. We have a Mystic Shield. What does this do? Play when you are about to run away from one or more monsters on your turn. You and any helper, if any, escape automatically. Usable only once. Well, that was nice. You and any helper. That's sweet. That doesn't know what's happened. Usually you leave everybody else high and dry in a fight, right? <laughs> So we have Rock Eye. While you have this, you may look at two cards when you kick down the door and choose one to encounter, discarding the other. But you also have a negative one to run away because you lost your depth perception. That would be a really good card to have. I like that one a lot. All right, we got a wishing ring. He's so cute. And if you guys don't know, these little symbols right here allow you to separate different cards if you do end up putting them together. So this little Warhammer here is the set identifier, identifier for Age of Sigmar on this one, okay? We have a Plague Scroll. Boots of the Oppressor, an extra plus three if your level is higher than at least one monster in combat. We have the Loon Helm. That would be a great, like cosplay piece there the aether quartz pendant battle plan we have the moon cutter which is a plus two bonus on that one 
Veil of Indulgence. This is adorable. Okay. So, usable by the Hedonite of Salanish only. And this is an extra plus four bonus when looking for trouble. So, looking for trouble is those cards that you end up coming out of your hand if you don't get a monster right away on that one. We have the Volt Spear, the Dread Blade, which can be a one or a two handed weapon, it looks like. Gum Shoes, the Crown of Conquest, a Bellowing Blade. Ooh, Drake Scale Armor. Oh, green. Why do you do me like this, green? It looks so cool. Beautiful colors on that. Ladder of Command. This is usable by the Moon Clan Grot only, and it's a plus three. And it get, just gives you, like, a little bit of height so you can defeat your enemies. If you can get up there and you can punch them in the nose, I'm sure that's helpful <laughs> for those guys. <laughs> you know? Let's see here. We have a Liquid Core Sword, which looks like a little thermometer there. A Mangler Squid, the Moon Fang, a Plague Reaper. Let's see here. A Valentian Crown. This is usable by the Night Haunt only. No bonus against the undead monsters, but it is a plus three on that. We have a Web Strung Cloak, which is fantastic. And he's like catching spiders in that cloak. <laughs> and let's see here. We got some Sewer Clogs. Ooh, okay. So hold on. There's like some really big ones back here. I'm going to see the Black Coach here. That one looks cool too. All right, I want to look at some of these, like, really big ones, and then we'll move on to the special cards that come in these other pieces here. So we'll move these out of the way. We have a Sigmarite. This card must be placed with an item that gives a combat bonus that is now the Sigmarite whatever and worth an extra plus three in combat or plus six against a chaos monster. This card goes with the item if it is lost, stolen, or discarded. Put that one over there so you can see it. Sometimes when they have long text on them, I'm like, ooh, what, uh, what sort of new stuff did they add on here? And then we have a Celestite, a Celestite, which is this card must be placed with an item that gives a combat bonus in this. Okay, so this is also like the same sort of one as the Sigmarite. That one looks cooler, though. I mean, I'm all about like swords and stuff, but that one, the other one looks cooler. All right, let's look one up these other ones. All right, we're going to go with this kilometer next here, guys. Kilometers are so fantastic. I, I want to see the back of this. I want to see the art on the back. Like, we get to see some art here and there, but I never get to see the final art until it's, until it's out. And we have some cards in the back of this. Right there. We'll count up those as well. The base price on the deluxe game with the board and everything and all that stuff is $29.95, guys. And these guys here are not – you can get this at the Warehouse 23 store. This guy here, you cannot get at the Warehouse 23 store yet. Hopefully it's going to come here in this first quarter or so. And then this is going to be the side that you would use to show the munchkin in combat. And like I was saying a little bit – oh, hello, Martin. How are you doing? Munchkin rocks. Yes, absolutely. So with this here, a lot of players will actually, instead of maybe using this board here, they'll keep track of their level for everybody to see, or they'll be using the boards for their actual level and then using this as a level slash combat bonus as well for all of their equipment. I personally use these just in combat whenever we're totaling up a combat between players, especially when you get to that nine range there. It gets crazy. People are throwing in cards. Like you're having to recount and recount with the kilometers. You don't have to do that. You just count once and then you add or subtract things from the meter. And then the monster side here is on the back. That looks cool. So then whenever these are actually out on the table, you have the two different kilometers out. And you can clearly see, everybody at the table can clearly see, all right, this is the monster kilometer. Then this is the munchkin kilometer that's over here. And there's no discrepancies on what's happening or what sort of levels are getting added or taken away from things. Like, these things are awesome. Let's look at the cards, though. So this one also, we were talking before about the little signifiers that you have in the cards that show they're from different sets. If you end up combining these and you ever want to take them out, Here's the little set on there. It looks like a little kilometer here. And it looks like you get four different cards from the kilometer. You get Curse, Experience Not Required. The next time you kill a monster on your turn, you gain no levels from that combat. 
Oh, that's so sad. We have From the Age of Myth, is, which is a plus 10 to monster on that. So you'd have the monster of such and such from the Age of Myth. We have some war paint. This is like, <laughs> uh, this is sometimes how like my kid will paint a miniature <laughs> right here. You may discard this instead of suffering the bad stuff from a single monster, which is also nice because you can put on your war paint and be like, all right, guys, I'm out. <laughs> and we have the scavenged blade. Place this card with an item that gives a combat bonus, even one that is restricted to an army you don't have. That item is now a scavenged whatever and is worth an extra plus one in combat. This card goes with that item if it is lost, stolen, or discarded. And that is an item enhancer on that one. And it's kind of just been like taped together. The blade is just put together. It's fine. It's fine. It'll still work as long as the edge is sharp, you know? <laughs> and then we have the Munchkin Lightning Dice here. I really like the colors on these. These ones here actually match the die color here that comes with this set. And I don't know 100% if that's like I'm a super fan of that or not because usually in the sets they'll have this die as like a different color from these ones and then the cards specifically say different things. But I, if they have just the specific colors for them, that's pretty cool then. Although I would feel like I need another blue one, right? <laughs> All right, let's open this up and see what's up. And usually the cards in here do end up talking specifically about the dice and give you special bonuses per the dice, which is always nice if I can get them open. This is the whole this is the whole box opening thing right here is like oh, okay. Let me just tell you they're in there. <laughs> All right, there we go. Maybe I'm just really bad at opening things, though. I mean, to be fair, I only open maybe board games, and I don't usually open blister packs, except for munchkin stuff. All right. Dice-wise, you get these guys right here, and it looks like we have four cards here that we get for these. I'm going to put those dice there for you guys. And we have two doors, two treasure cards, the door cards here we have kit bashed plus question mark question mark to monster play during any combat on a single monster roll two lightning dice of opposite colors if the lighter die is higher apply that die result as a bonus to the monster if the die is darker if is the darker die is higher then apply that result as a penalty if they are equal the monster has a plus 10 in this fight Ouch. Like, for all those people that are super great at rolling, <laughs> if the monster is defeated, draw one extra treasure. And this is, has the most adorable, like, little thing on here. He's so cute. But, yeah, kit bashing, whenever you're putting your miniatures together and everything, is freaking awesome. That's cute. They did a good job with all of the lingo and putting terminology and stuff in this. We have we enforcers level one through six roll the roll a lightning die. When this card enters, the result of the roll will tell you how many levels of one we die enforcers you are fighting. They are separate monsters, but you only get one level and one treasure for killing all of them. If you must run away, roll for each one. What? What? Hold on here. Okay. So you, when you roll the lightning dice, when this card enters combat, the result of the roll tells you how many level one we enforcers. So you could technically have like six of them. This would be a really bad card to get in the beginning and then roll a six. That would be horrible. <laughs> I mean, because you would have to defeat a level six plus monster and whatever anybody threw on it. But like if you were trying to run away or get away from them, it would be... So hard to do that because you're going to run out of cards and you ha you would have to roll really well for that. That's a cool card. That's Those are nice and new rules. Those are interesting. Okay. We have the scroll of world blending. Play during any combat and roll the lightning die. If the roll is even, all chaos monsters now count as undead instead. If the roll is odd, all undead monsters now count as chaos monsters instead. Usable only once. 
the big thing with that is if a monster is undead, like this guy right here, it'll say it up in the top portion right here, it says undead, and then you can end up throwing in another monster to match that that is also undead on somebody because it's like 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 type monsters travel together. So it's like if one monster that was undead went to the bathroom, then you know they have to take another undead monster with them. You know, that's just, those are the rules, guys. Those are rules. I didn't make that up. That's just how it goes. <laughs> The Cosmic Balance. If you draw this card face up, resolve it immediately. Otherwise, you may play it at any time on your turn, except during combat. Each player rolls one lightning dice. Everyone who rolls above their current level goes up a level. Everyone who matches their current level goes up two levels. And everyone who rolls below their current level loses a level. Then you put this card in the box, and it is out of the game. So this one does not return to the game for that game. That's a really cool card as well. Those are a lot of new rules as well with that one. I'm super happy about that. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed opening up this dice pack and seeing all the new rules with that. They were exceptionally different than I think a lot of the other like a lot of the other blister packs that come with the dice. They added a lot of really interesting new rules and how they affected the game with that. I really, really enjoyed that dice pack opening. That was awesome. The lightning dice. Okay, guys. So thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to have some playthroughs coming up. I believe Hunter is going to be doing playthroughs with a bunch of the crew like Randy Shuneman and Jimmy. And we also have some more box openings coming up. We're going to be taking a look at Z Shot again. We're going to be playing that. We also have FnordCon, guys. So I want to talk a little bit about FnordCon really quick because it's coming up soon here. It's April 3rd through 5th. It's $40 for entrance, okay? And you get the most amazing swag bags. Last year's swag bag was so exceptional. You got, you ended up getting like ogre pieces and you got like games and like other little packs of things. And then when you were there, there were painting contests where you could enter in like little, uh, little ogre miniatures and stuff like that to win things. And then there was like raffles and stuff. Your $40 that you spend to go to FnordCon is like, you're going to get your $40 worth of gameplay and meeting people and just cool swag and stuff you end up winning. There was nobody last year that walked away from FnordCon that I think was unhappy. Like everybody that we had talked to and when our surveys went out and everything, we had such great support from that. It was such an exciting event. It's also going to be where you guys can play Car Wars 6th edition, okay? So they're going to have a, well, I'm sure they're going to have, I know that last year they had like, I think three, no, six. I think they had six tables set up there for Car Wars now that I think of it because I was thinking three in the front, but they had six tables, I believe, set up there for Car Wars where they were playing four-person games all weekend. So you're going to be able to try that out. You're going to be able to try out really old Steve Jackson games from the vault. You're going to be able to try out really new Steve Jackson games that aren't even out yet because they do a lot of playtesting down there. We're also going to have John Kovolik there as a special guest this year. I'm so excited. So if some of you are looking for all those signatures... You know, because there are certain cards and stuff out there. You need John's signature or you need Steve's signature. And maybe you want Andrew's signature as well. Also, Randy is going to be there. You know, he helped design Car Wars 6th Edition. So you are going to get like this really, it's a smaller convention. And that's actually super fantastic because you get a lot more one-on-one -on -one time with all of these people like Steve Jackson and these amazing designers and artists and stuff. And it is such a fun experience. I'm so excited that they're doing FnordCon again this year. It's so good. They are actually going to be doing it at the Omni Hotel, I believe. Yes, Omni South Park Hotel. You have discounted rates if you go on the Steve Jackson Games website to check that out. I believe it's $1.39 a night. And that is in Austin, Texas. So I'm sure you guys can look up some really great flight rates probably for April. April is a excellent time to fly because, especially in Texas, I don't think it's too cold in Texas during April, if I can remember correctly. It was pretty nice out. Like, I think it rained a little bit, 
on one day last year, but that was it. It was a really great like time and experience and getting to hang out with all you guys. And, and I'll be there as well. So if you guys want to hang out and play some games with me, I will be there as well. And I think that's about it. That's all, that's all my stuff. If you guys want to leave comments on what you guys want to see, if you want guys want to see more Car Wars stuff, if you guys want to see more box openings, if you want to see more playthroughs, if you have a question about a certain game, go ahead and leave them in the comments, and we will get back with you and make some more content for you guys. Other than that, I, got, I hope you guys have a safe and happy weekend, all right? Have a good one.